is it going boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. How is it going boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. It is a beautiful, beautiful day here in Key West. I think all my complaining finally paid off. We've got some good weather. We honestly, just me and, me and Will, you know Will, cooking with clams. Um, honestly, we don't really know what we're gonna do. We don't really have an agenda. We have so a bunch of dive gear. We got stuff for Wahoo. We've got spear guns. We've got a cast net, some fishing reels, and um, a little bit of chum. So weather's nice. We're gonna head out and kind of see what we can get into. And I figured I would bring you along with us. Let's rock and roll. So we drove around for about an hour. Was, we were looking for some smaller baits, some pilchards to maybe try for some tunas or muttons or something. Um, those did not cooperate. So we headed offshore. We've got some dive boats out here that look like they're looking for Wahoo. And the water looks really, really good. So we're gonna anchor up and put some chum out and see if we can get some bigger baits and maybe we'll bump troll some big baits for Wahoo if, they, if the baits show up. Um, if not, we've got spear guns as a backup. So that is the mark I'm looking for. We're shaking the bag over here. They came up for just a second. So the trick with live bait down here, and there's not a trick at all, you either gotta know where it is, know someone who knows where it is, or get lucky. Those are the only three options to catch big baits. Um, like you said, we didn't catch little pilchards, so tunas are out of the question unless we're jigging, but they came up. These are Speedos right here. That's, that is Wahoo candy. So hopefully these guys will come up and I'll show you how we catch them, hopefully. And hopefully we'll fish a little bit. <laughs> so this is a dream for them to come up this easy. This never happens. This took about, what do you think, four minutes? If maybe. That. So I'm using little teeny tiny gold hook. We've got really, really light leader. It's not a huge deal, but anything under 15 pound normally will work. Um, want a little teeny tiny piece like that. Ah. Honestly, I should just be hand lining them. I don't even need a rod. Or if you got one of those hoop nets, those work pretty well. You've got to be quick because at any time these things can change their mind. Oh, there you go. At any time they can change their mind and just disappear. They're back. They're back. Sorry, that well is really loud. And I try not to touch them if I can help it. A lot of times they'll shake that out. And he's not gonna hold on. Got a little de hooker rig. They're, they're decently hardy baits if you have an okay well. There we go. And that is how you catch a speedo. So we're gonna catch a few more and um Hopefully a few more and we'll get some rigs out for Wahoo. This is going way too smoothly. It's stressing me out. Oh, that one went straight out of the boat. Mucho grande. This is what dreams are made of. Look how thick it is, it's just all the way down. Like I said, it normally does not happen this easy. Um, this is either a really good sign or a really bad sign. I can't imagine that there's not any Wahoo around with this much bait. The water's perfectly crystal clear, um, nice current. Really, really cool either way. So we have got a few baits. Um, we're, gonna troll, we're gonna slow troll these on wire rig. Everyone has their own way of doing this. If you don't like how I'm doing this, that is fine by all means. Um, everyone's got their own way. I've got, I believe this is number five wire, little swivel. Um, got about 30 feet of 30 pound floral on this one. This one's got 40. I'm gonna try both just to mix it up. Um, water's really, really clear. Uh, wire to a big J hook. I can't remember what size it is, ballpark it. And then I've got just a stinger rig on the back there. So we're gonna get these up and uh, Get some speedos out, see if we can get a bite. All right. So we 
again. This is not the right way, just my way. Going through the nose. Sometimes if you want to get crazy, you'll throw a slide and hook in the middle. Or I'll do two J's instead of a treble. So I feel like some days the trebles give me trouble. Make sure there's some slack there. Down it goes. And essentially all we're gonna do is just kind of bump troll in and out of gear. You don't want to pull these real fast because you'll kill them. And uh, we sit and wait. Yep. He's still on? Something definitely. He, something came up at him. <laughs> Perfect. Voila. Well, I guess I got my wish. That was the one that got eaten. Yeah. Somehow, something hit that, got it off, bent it all up, and we never saw it. Either he's good or we suck. Eight, I set the hook, sharks pushed it up to the surface and a shark grabbed it. That is a shark, straight down, heavy. Wow. That was fast. I can see the two sharks behind it. Oh. They are gonna make this difficult. That's the second fish we've hooked and had the shark to eat it within 10 seconds. Lovely. Oh. Get it, grab it. That sounds like the right one. Crank on him. Keep that rod tip up. Don't don't just crank. There you go, up and down. Keep it up. Come over to this corner. Top corner. There you go. Keep it tight. 
just kidding. <laughs> if it goes slack, just real, 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 real. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of, you got a spiral action going there. I'm pretty sure it got it. Foul hook? Tail. Nah, foul hook. Oops, sorry. Okay. So, you can make fish dip out of these. We really just don't want them. Let them, let them live to fight another day. He'll go back. Down he goes. Good practice run. Good work, everybody. Look, it's still happening. <laughs> On the surface. Came up, crashed on the surface. I don't know if the camera picked it up. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. Uh, whatever I have on small. Or half a fish. Oh, I just pulled the hook right freaking there. I think it looked like a king. It was, it was very, very light. Barracuda. Barracuda? <laughs> Even worse. Come on, man. Keep working them. Try and get that hook out. He swallowed that, so he's taking that home with him. I ain't sticking my hand in there. That first one was not a barracuda. I don't know what it was. I mean, they'll come up and do that. Barracuda really? as well. Yeah. Um, if there's two things I've learned in my life, it is that if at first you don't succeed, try again. And number two is if you can't catch it, shoot it. So I'm going to get in the water. So there's been enough action. A um, couple of short strikes, barracuda, a couple of kings. Everything literally looks perfect for Wahoo. We just, I don't, we may have had a bite by one, but like I said, a couple of short strikes. Enough that it's made me curious that I'm gonna hop in uh, with the steel reel and take a peek. Can be a little more selective with the spear gun, so. That's rock and roll. So as I said, the water just looked way too good not to get in. Um, fishing can be tricky because you can't be as selective. Uh, when I'm in the water, I can clearly see whether or not you know my target species is around, which is nice. And as always, I try to keep YouTube land realistic. If you're ever considering booking a Wahoo trip, some days we float for all day and we don't see a single Wahoo. This day just happened to be a good day. Um, and there happened to be some around you'll see here in a sec big old hammerhead there love seeing those hammerheads are pretty cool so solo comes in he's kind of already on his way out i didn't really see its approach and it's kind of a far shot so just briefly i pause and stop kicking so i can stabilize my shot and in my opinion that was kind of a 
kind of a Hail Mary for me, which I'm not a huge fan, but it was one fish on its way out. Um, and luckily, I got lucky. So I'm going to let this... Grab the flower from... Just don't lose them. I'm going to let this clip run kind of raw. I see a lot of people that like to hang on to the float. I'm kind of putting a little pressure on it. I Quite honestly, I couldn't see how good or bad my shot was, so I didn't really want to put a ton of pressure on this fish. It was kind of far. Uh -oh. um, and I didn't, I just didn't see where it stuck, so I wasn't super comfortable. The fish slowed down, so I'm starting to work on it, trying to get it closer to me. And it decides it's going to take off, so I let it go. And I've said it in the past, if you want to hold on to that float, you better be willing to bet your shot on it, because it's not uncommon for a... Oh, get the flashers and come and get me! It's not uncommon for a shot to pull out. The sharks were after him. Neutral. And I always preach line management. You can see them. Um, swimming and I'm throwing that line behind me. Don't sit in one spot and pull it up around you. You're going to create a bundle really easy to get caught in that line, especially if that fish takes off, a shark grabs it. I know I repeat that quite a bit, but it can make a very dangerous situation. So I'm swimming forward and I'm pushing the line back behind me. brain and bleed. Yeah, baby! <sighs> That's alright. Hold on. One solo, baby. Look at this shot. It came in right here and came out the top of his head. I have never done that. Isn't that impressive? Yeah. Yeah, baby. So there was one down there. Just one solo. I was actually swimming and dragging the flashers and I turned around, he was following the flashers, I dropped him, dropped, stayed kind of mellow, he went out and I literally stopped kicking so I could, I could stabilize my shot and I kind of threw a long one out in front of him and man, it ended up good, didn't really mess up any meat at all. Yeah. Let's get back in the water. I got booger. Just you got a burger? Yeah, I got a burger. Hey, where did you bring two? <laughs> Only one. Oh man. One and the leftover rice that <laughs> So that's what's really funny about diving. We've we've been out here fishing for something busting over here. We've been out here fishing for three hours, a couple short strikes, um, a couple kings and a barracuda or two. I was in the water for ten minutes and a wahoo swam by, so I don't know. It's just Maybe I'm a terrible fisherman. Maybe that was purely luck, but the steel reel worked, so I'm gonna get back in. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you see him? Stuff's busting over there. Yeah. But it looks like a sailfish jumping, which I have no interest in. So I don't know if the camera picks it up, but there are frigates and what looks like bonitas or tunas just exploding 
on the surface over here. We saw one tuna come all the way out of the water, so before we set on this next drift, because I love Will. Straight ahead, they are exploding. I'm gonna troll a jig through here. Look at him. Let's see if we can hook a tuna. Come on, fish on, Will. <laughs> Get it. Yes. I'm in neutral. <laughs> That might be a tuna. I'm gonna back up on him a little bit, try oh and get him out of the way, the way of the sharks. Get ready to reel, 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 reel. <laughs> I wish the camera could pick it up. There are frigates and flying fish everywhere. Bonitas and tunas just jumping all over the place and we don't have any little live bait. Don't let it whoop you, dude. You said you wanted one. <laughs> Change your mind? Dude, he bit. ran. Yeah, he did. Hopefully it's a tuna, not a, a bonita. I mean, I know you eat those too. At this point, I think it might be half of whatever it was. Giant <laughs> turtle. He's like, hey, what are y'all doing? <laughs> what? All jokes aside, Will just made an episode of eating a bonita. He made some rice bowls, which they were actually pretty good. So. <laughs> Can we talk about that turtle? <laughs> he was like, hey, what are you guys doing? What do you got, dog? Do anything. Oh, bring him around, bring him around. Oh, he's a pocket one. Oh my god. Oh. I bounced right off his head. Hold on, hold on. I don't want to get yelled at by Matt Conrad for hitting the meat. Look at that, Matt. Right in the cheek. <laughs> Kiko's jig, baby. <laughs> All right, we're putting that back out, just in case. How did that thing run that hard? Dude. <laughs> Will wanted a black fin. <laughs> yeah. Brain and bleed. Like this is insane. They're just exploding everywhere. Look at over here, the frigates working. Huh. Fish on! <laughs> Turn towards him, we're gonna chase this one. There you go, put it in gear. Not chase, but we're gonna do this a little faster. All right, head this way. Straighten it out. We're gonna get right on top of the quick. <laughs> All right, neutral. I've only got 25 on here, why? <laughs> There he is, he's got, I got color. This is a bigger one, Will. <laughs> okay. Okay, I hear you, buddy. I hear you, buddy. He's not having it. Whew. I only got 25 on here, otherwise I'd horse him. Don't hit him in the meat. No. Well, we'll see, I might. <laughs> right in the head. <laughs> Trade you. <ya. laughs> <laughs> Grab the camera. That is a tuna, baby. <laughs> on the Kiko's jig. On the troll. Thank you, Neil, for tying a good jig. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Woo! Look what this tuna had in his belly. Brand new flying fish. That's what they've been chasing around eating. Wild. Thank you, brother. You're gonna be delicious. Or sister, whichever. Ooh, it's like up in my bit. It's like zoomed in up in my business. A little personal. Hello. So we are losing sun. I did one more drift. I didn't see any wahoo, but it's just everything looks so good. So much life. 
starting to lose the sun a little bit, so I'm going to do one more. I think we're going to call it. All right, wish me luck. I thought about it. So a few episodes ago, I had a pack of Wahoo follow me up to the boat as I was getting out. And this one, I just happened to have my camera on and I hopped in and they were there. Like, sometimes you just get lucky. There's like 10 of them. And I would rather be lucky than good any day of the week. These are all smaller fish. I couldn't really honestly decide which one to target. So I just kind of picked the closest one to me. And I'm coming down on this fish and it kind of decides it's going to shoot towards the surface, which shooting up with a spear gun really affects your shot. The, the weight of the shaft um, can really drag that, um, that shaft down a bit. So I hit it pretty low. I'm not making an excuse, I just, I hit it low. That was the reality of it. And I actually turned my camera off because I wasn't sure if it was on. And unfortunately it, it wouldn't turn back on. That's a horrible shot. So you're going to watch this from the remainder of this from the top side. <laughs> Tell me what you need. I think my GoPro won't turn on again. If you work at GoPro, what the hell is wrong with these things? <laughs> Do you want another gun? Come over here, get close to me, just in case I need that gun. Throw it in the water, butt first. Oh, shoot me. Number two, baby. I don't think my camera turned. I literally jumped in and there was like 10 of them on a wall swimming right by me. I went down, lined up on one. I think my camera was on and then I tried to double check it and I might have turned it off, but went to double check or double check. <laughs> Woo! I dropped down. They like lined up and then he kind of came at me and then started to run and he went up so I was beneath him. And when I shot, it went low. That's why I hit him so low. But luckily it held. Look at that. Jeez. That's why I was babying Come it. Come on. Oh, wow. By the hair on the chin. I will take it. Okay, next one's last drift, I promise. <laughs> What an awesome afternoon. Didn't get out here till late. Big thanks for big thanks to Will for coming out. We didn't really have an agenda and sometimes those are the best days. Um, kind of prepared for everything. We ended up with two very nice Wahoo, two black fantunas, um, which is enough to sell. The market needs fish really bad. Um, my good friend Ryan just opened a restaurant around the corner from the boat and he's in dire need of fish. So these are gonna go to the market, help him out. Um, we'll get back break down the numbers like you guys like uh, and I will see you there alrighty so I've got some commercial numbers here for you I haven't done one of these in a while um, I know you guys enjoy them so I'm happy to share it but before I get into them a couple quick updates I wanted to keep you up to date on uh, banana gun 2.0 we've made a couple fine-tuned adjustments to it um, and I want to just get that finalized before we uh, make a batch of them. So we're probably going to do a pre-order type of deal because I'm not really sure how many people are actually going to be interested. I had a bunch of comments, but um, you know how that goes. So that'll probably go up on my Instagram first, especially if it's in the middle of the week. So if you uh, want to get information on that uh, early, go follow me on Instagram, dibs on bottom underscore adventures. Um, and I'll also post it on here once we get that up. But like I said, probably do a pre-order type of deal. And then I think after that it's about an eight week process because um, the guns are all handmade. So it's just gonna take a little bit of time. But um, other thing is I looked into Patreon a little bit more. Um, it's kind of an interesting concept, but my thought would be 
and this is all hypothetical. If I did a Patreon, it probably would be like a one-time price type of deal instead of doing a membership tiers. And I would really like to do once a month, um, if you're a Patreon supporter, would either give a free ride-along on a YouTube episode. So if you're a member, I'll do a random uh, raffle each month. And if you win, you get to come out and film an, on a YouTube episode with me, you and a friend. That'd be so cool. And funny. if you're... That'd be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't ran that by Madeline yet, <laughs> um, if you can't tell. And if you're not in the area, then uh, it would just be a customized video. You can tell me what you'd like to see, and um, I'll give you a shout-out and all that stuff. But still tossing ideas around. Anyways, let's get down to the commercial breakdown. Um, went out, Wahoo Tunas. And this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to factor the YouTube video profit into it, but obviously this video, I don't know what it's going to make yet. So I took an average last week's video... The shark episode was kind of an average video, so uh, I will factor that in. So we had, um, and I'm going to ballpark these numbers just out of respect for the market's prices, around 50 pounds of Wahoo and 20 pounds of tuna, uh, total sale of $315. Last week's video, I think it was the first four or five days, made uh, right around 300 bucks, So a grand total of $615. Um, with the way that fuel is right now, fuel was kind of a lot. It was uh, over 200 bucks. So we'll we'll say a daily profit um, of about $400. So that was actually not that bad for just kind of going out and goofing off. Um, I'm sure if you're you've been outside in the past couple of weeks, you've noticed gas prices have gone way up, which is kind of making it hard on me to do the commercial stuff. But um, we'll figure it out. And it's just another speed bump to get through. So we'll be all right. Um, anyways, other than that, thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was a lot of talking at the end. I do apologize. Um, leave some comments of what you would like to see. Do appreciate the support. Seriously do. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, like if you have not. Subscribe if you're not yet. And I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there. See ya. <laughs>